Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a homemade homemade complex number. I mean complex problem. <laughs> Did I say complex number? Okay, z is a complex number and we're going to solve for z. We are given z to the power z i equals negative i. Now think about this. At this point you probably guessed the solution, right? Did you? Please be quiet if you did. Don't let anyone else know, okay? Anyways, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to turn z to the zi into e to the power zi ln z, because that's what it is. Whenever you have some complex number to the power of another complex number, that power or exponent goes here, and the other number, the base, goes here. Make sense? And we want to set this equal to negative i. Negative i can be written as e to the power i times negative pi over 2. On the argand plane, if you remember, argand, the d is pronounced, by the way, sometimes people don't, but negative i is going to appear here on the imaginary axis, which is on the negative side, sort of, right? And it's going to have an angle of 3 pi over 2, but if you want to use the principal argument, we should go with negative pi over 2, because our principal argument needs to be between negative pi and pi, so that it can be uniquely expressed. Okay, so that's why I'm going to use negative pi over 2 for the argument. And then, of course, we are allowed to add multiples of 2 pi to get the general solution. There are infinitely many angles. Who gives us or which give us the exact same value? So all of these for all n integer values, this is equal to negative i. Negative i is a unique value, but we can express it in infinitely many ways. All right? In polar form, of course, thanks to Euler. Great. Now, we have this equality, and what we can do with that is amazing because we can just make up an equation, right, from here. So by bringing down the exponents like natural log both sides, we're going to get the following. Z, i, ln, z equals i times negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Again, n is an integer, don't forget that, okay? Positive or negative. Obviously, i cancels out because it's not zero, and we get something even simpler. z ln z equals negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. Is that the end of the story? No, this is just the beginning, okay? Now, here's what we're going to do. We're going to invoke a very special function. I know some people don't like it because you can't explicitly write down that function, like you can say, hey, f of x equals x e to the x is a function that I can clearly explain it. So whenever you plug in 5, it's 5 e to the 5. If x is 0, it's 0, so on and so forth, right? You know what the output is when you know the input. But we're going to invert this function, and that function is called Lambert's w function, okay? That's basically a function whose input is x e to the x and output is just x. So it reverses the process. Make sense? Great. But before we can apply it, because I don't have this, and sometimes I'll express it as t e to the t because I want it to be general. Sometimes I have x in my equations. If you input t to the t, you should be getting t. By the way, I'm not saying that the answer is going to be unique because this could be multi-valued. Even in the real world, there can be more than one possible answer because the function isn't necessarily one-to-one, -one, depending on which interval you're on, okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and do this. I want to write this, the left-hand side, as ln z times e to the power ln z, because z is a e to the ln z, right? I can write it that way. Now, this kind of gives me my t to the t, because this is going to be my t, and this is going to be my e to the t. Make sense? And now, I can go ahead and apply the w on both sides. And if I do, if I apply w here and here, the left-hand side just becomes t, which is ln z, and the right-hand side just stays as w something. This is the part I, I guess the people don't like about it, because what is this, right? I mean, you have to use a calculator. Yes, but sometimes you, all, you have to use a calculator, right? I mean, if you have a septic equation like this one, right? How are you going to solve it? You have to use a numerical approach, Newton's approximation, whatever, or Newton, was it Newton? Anyways, there are numerical methods, 
but there is no septic heptic formula. <laughs> Hexic formula doesn't exist, right? Even the quintic doesn't exist. Some people say it does, it doesn't, okay? Anyways, that's a different story. We'll talk about it later. So this is ln z, but I want to find z. And z, again, can be written as e to the ln z. So z is going to be e to the power w of negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi. By the way, I write negative pi over 2 differently, but they are actually the same because it doesn't matter if you have a fraction like this. You can write it in so many ways. But don't write it like this because this is not good. Use one of these methods, okay? Anyways, that's just my pet peeve. Now, we got the answer, didn't we? What is this though? Like, what? What are you talking about? So let's look at the principal value, a very special case. If n is equal to 0, then z becomes much simpler, e to the power w of negative pi over 2. And if you plug this into Wolfram Alpha, you can find the answer. I don't know if you can do it with Desmos. I think Desmos, you can graph Lambert's w, but I don't think you can evaluate any value. Or maybe there's a Lambert's W function calculator online. I'm pretty sure there is. There's a calculator for everything, except for quintic equations because there's no formula, right? Anyways, so what do we do? We kind of settle for this solution or dig a little deeper? Because remember, I told you at the beginning, you probably guessed the solution, right? Didn't you? Okay, let's take a look. So I'm going to go ahead and work on this w of negative pi over 2 a little bit, shall we? So to find out what it is, I'm going to start with this. ln z times e to the ln z is equal to, remember that was equal to what? Negative pi over 2, okay, here. Negative pi over 2 plus 2 pi n, but I want to use n equals 0, so I'm just going to write negative pi over 2, all right? Now, here is the fun part. Here is the mathematical part. I'm going to write this as this negative 1 times pi over 2. And then I'm going to write the negative 1 as i squared times pi over 2. And then I'm going to separate the i squared into i times i and leave one of the i's with pi over 2. So write it as i pi over 2 times i. Make sense? So far so good? Are you following? I'm sure you recognize i pi over 2 if you've done some complex numbers. Let's take a look. Now we have ln z times e to the ln z equals, now I'm going to write the i as e to the power i pi over 2. Why? Because the argon plane, think about it. Where is i? i is right here. So the angle it makes, the argument, this is the modulus 1, and then this is the pi over 2. Of course, that's the principal argument, but who cares, right? You can use it. At least that gives us a solution, right? Which we can kind of I don't know, we can kind of tangible solution. The dual from W something is too, too abstract. So where, where do we go from here though? Take a look. We have T to the T and C to the C. You got that? Hopefully you see what I see. What I mean is that this corresponds to this and this corresponds to this. You get the idea? So from here, we get ln Z equals I pi over two or you can write this as e to the ln z, which is z, by the way, equals e to the power i pi over 2. e to the i pi over 2 is i. We just talked about it, remember? So z equals i is a solution. Are you serious? Let's go ahead and check it out. So we, I'm claiming that z equals i is a solution. What's my equation? z to the z i. Let's go ahead and replace z with i. i to the power i times i is i squared. But i squared is negative 1. i to the power negative 1 means 1 over i. Multiply by negative i and negative i. This becomes 1 and this becomes negative i, which is what we had on the right-hand side. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.